Welcome to CounterPoint. I'm Tanya Granick Allen. Remember in 2021, the federal government announced that it was going to be investing $27.2 billion to allow over the next five years to allow for a national daycare program. And then each province would have to come up with its own program to access those funds. Remember, it's going to cost 27.2 up front, but then $8 billion thereafter to manage it. And for what? For parents and families across this country to be able to access affordable daycare at a cost of an average of $10 a day. So how will that program work? And we've talked about this a few times on this program. We talked about the differences between profit and for-profit centers, between private daycare, licensed daycares, things like this. I want to now delve further into this issue as we see the rollout has happening coast to coast, and this will impact probably many of you, our viewers. Well, joining me now to share his expertise is Peter Sean Taylor. He's a senior features editor at the C2C Journal, and he's the recent author of the piece, Canada's National Private Sector Childcare Destruction Program. Snazzy title. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. My uh, pleasure to be here, Tanya. Excellent. So obviously there are concerns emerging across the country, but there seems to be a lot of concern from the private sector childcare providers. So perhaps you can start us off by explaining what is the difference between not-for-profit daycare and profit daycare? Well, uh, from the parents' perspective, I would argue there's uh, not very much difference at all. Uh, they both uh, provide licensed care. They both uh, have to meet the same quality standards and inspection standards from the government. So in terms of the uh, service they're providing, uh, quite often parents don't even know whether their uh, center is a for-profit or non-profit. They both charge uh, um, competitive rates uh, in the, the current system, the status quo system. Um, you, you hear a lot from uh, certain academics that there's something better about nonprofit uh, daycare because you shouldn't uh, make money off the backs of children, et cetera. Um, those are, tend to be ideological arguments. Uh, uh, the facts of the matter are that, you know, from a parent's perspective, there's not really that much difference. But um, the Trudeau government seems to have bought into this ideological um, a difference, that there's something holier about nonprofit uh, daycare. Um, you mentioned the 2021 federal budget that uh, unveiled this new um, national daycare program. It included uh, a line that said that the, the new system should be, quote, primarily not for profit. Uh, and now we're seeing, as, it, as, as you described, as it's rolling out across the provinces, we're, we're starting to see what this really means to the um, Trudeau government and, and how that's affecting the individual provinces. Now, um, I think we have about a minute to go before commercial, um, but in terms of which parents are accessing each system, because I, I just want to kind of lay this out for this discussion. Do you see that equal parents are going for profit or, for, or not for profit? How How is the market comprised of like how many centers proportionally are profit versus not for profit? Well, Canada being Canada, uh, things uh, vary quite a bit across the, the country. In some provinces, uh, particularly in Atlantic Canada and the West, you'll see um, for-profit centers comprise a majority of the system. Uh, sometimes as much as 60, almost 70 percent are for-profit centers. So uh, clearly the parents there, um, most parents are going to be using a for-profit center. Uh, Quebec and Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, less so. There's a higher uh, pr proportion of, of nonprofits. So, so there it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but so it's, it's difficult to come up with what the Canadian average is. It, it varies across provinces, but uh, parents being parents, they'll take uh, quite often, they're just looking for a space that's uh, close to their uh, house or it's convenient or uh, their friends have, have used it. Um, so uh, as I said, it generally doesn't really matter to parents what um, ownership format they're using. They're looking for a bunch of other things. Is, does it meet my child's needs? Is it convenient? Uh, are they doing a good job? All those sorts of things. So that would be the, uh, okay. the, the story on that. Okay, we're going to pick up this discussion in just a few moments.
Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum. On Boom and Bust, what you're going to get are former prime ministers. It's amazing what you're going to accomplish if you don't mind who gets the credit. Senior economists. We need to unleash small businesses. This is a great country to start a business. It is not a great country to build a business. Realistically, we have to be a trading nation. That's our history. I'm very worried about how vulnerable Canada's economy is. These are the kinds of issues that we tackle at Boom and Bust. Welcome back. We're joined again by Peter Sean Taylor, Senior Features Editor at the C2C Journal. Peter, again, picking up our discussion, uh, one of the highlights of the latest article you wrote, this, the piece you wrote for the C2C, was kind of sounding the alarm, especially on behalf of the private uh, daycare operators. They're concerned that they're essentially going to be pushed out of business. Why do they get this impression, or, or how are they experiencing this? Well, as I said, uh, it's a national daycare program, but uh, daycare is a provincial responsibility. So Ottawa has been required to sign uh, individual deals with every province and territory. And what we're seeing is that, um, you know, Ottawa, as I explained, has this predisposition to prefer not-for-profit daycare, or they have, uh, they seem to dislike for-profit daycare for ideological reasons. And so what we're seeing is right. these, these different provincial deals um, um, roll out where Ottawa had quite a bit of leverage. It appears that they've uh, created terms that are inimical to, um, to the for-profit daycares um, operating as successful independent businesses. We see that in Nova Scotia where the a liberal government, a liberal provincial government signed a deal quite quickly in order to um, uh, get it done before a provincial election. Um, their daycare operators have been told that uh, they can't get access to the federal subsidies they need to be able to offer $10 a day daycare unless they basically give over complete operational control of their business to a, this, what they call a new central organization that will be run by the government, or they can convert that, to nonprofit. That, that's that's crazy. But, but that's a crazy, crazy sounding. So a private entrepreneur is going to hand over their business to the government or else? Basically, or else yeah. what? They just they shut down? Or are you not? Well, they, they <laughs> that sounds crazy access. to me. They won't get access to the subsidies. So they'll be charging $45, $50, $60 a day for daycare. And then the, the nonprofit down the street will be charging $10. So, you know, how, how's that going to end? Um, in Ontario, the same thing seems wow. to have happened. Um, they're told that... Uh, unless bureaucrats will be given control over these for-profit daycares, they'd be able to tell them whether they can replace the toys that the kids play with, whether they can paint the walls. Um, uh, these bureaucrats will be given the power to set a maximum allowable profit margin. Although if you talk to the daycare operators, they'll say there's no not gonna be any profit um, because they will not be compensated for expenses like property taxes, mortgage payments, uh, retirement packages, the sorts of things that, that businesses can't avoid. So there's um, a real confusion, I would think, among for-profit operators in many provinces. Uh, they were told that they were going to be part of this uh, federal deal. And then when they look at the fine print, they say, well, I, I, can't, I can't sign this. Um, this would uh, bankrupt me, a lot of them have told me. Now, and to be fair, this is not the case in every province. Um, you go to Alberta. Uh, for-profit daycare operators are, are quite content um, because there, uh, you talk to the government, I talked to the minister, um, she said, we fought very hard. You know, the Ottawa was pushing for a not-for-profit delivery and Alberta pushed back and they said, no, our commercial operators are a very important component of our, our system. So we're seeing a quite a, a large diversity in, in systems, uh, how this federal system is going to roll out. Um, and in some provinces, um, you're hearing from for-profit operators is saying that, you know, if I sign on, it's going to bankrupt me. So that, that causes some real problems for this concept of a national problem, um, national system. Sorry. It sounds like they're being pitted between a rock and a hard place. Uh, but I didn't think, well, this is going to sound silly for me to say, but I didn't think I'd see the day where the government is now competing with entrepreneurs who run, who run businesses to provide childcare. And again, in a climate where childcare, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but childcare is so in demand. There are many 
folks who are looking for childcare spots and you always hear the the wait lists are two years long as soon as you become expectant make sure you register and hold your spot definitely by the time you give birth because if you need that spot in one year well you're going to be on a long wait list regardless so it, this to me makes no sense if we're so in demand for these spots regardless of cost why would we be trying to run these businesses out of town and just to add another layer on this, keep in mind, these are generally for-profit daycares are run by female entrepreneurs. Uh, these are people that have put their life savings into a, um, a center because they generally have a, a deep desire to, to be in this um, industry, or they found that uh, the, the services provided for their kids didn't meet their standards, so they want to exceed what's available. So um, it, it's doubly uh, puzzling that uh, the federal government, which uh, uh, makes a great deal of being uh, you know, gender focused, and they in the same 2021 budget, there was also another um, component to aid female entrepreneurs. Welcome back to Counterpoint. Again, we're discussing Canada's national daycare program and how the provinces are rolling that out co coast to coast and what that would mean if you were a profit or not-for-profit daycare operator. And again, joining me is Peter Sean Taylor, Senior Features Editor with the C2C Journal. We were t discussing Alberta as, you know, I would suggest, and I think you would agree, is a good role model where they defended and advocated for all operators within the cadre of daycare. Uh, Alberta's um, was is a very good, interesting test case to see how, you know, how how their program was implemented. And of course, we can talk about Quebec in a second. But there was something interesting in in the story you wrote. You said Alberta's deal is that it adds a parental income test to the ten dollar mm -hmm. per day rate. This is a nod to the voluminous evidence that heavily subsidized daycare spaces are traditionally snapped up by well-off parents who can better negotiate waiting lists. So this was shocking. So just so that I'm clear, are you suggesting here that, that, that you know, of course, when people think $10 daycare, they say, okay, that's, you know, a lot of folks who can't afford, you know, 50 or $100 daycares, it's very expensive. And especially if you have multiple children, well, this will definitely help those who are, who might be struggling with daycare costs. But if this is being snapped up by, by those in the kind of higher end bracket, what's the point? Well, exactly. And we, we've seen this, we may get into Quebec in a little more detail in a, in a second, but the experience in Quebec, which has had a very cheap uh, daycare for 25 years, is that, uh, there's never enough to go around. I mean, that's basic economics. You lower the price uh, quite significantly. You're going to have lots of people um, eager to take advantage of it. Um, so you have waiting lists and you have, you know, you have to do a lot of organization to figure out, to, you know, when and where to get your name on these lists. And, and the evidence suggests that it's wealthy folks are ones that, uh, you know, they're well plugged in and they uh, have time to organize their lives in the optimal sort of way. Um, they're the ones that tend to get the uh, scarce, cheap daycare. So you end up uh, subsidizing the rich and the, and the lower income folks who maybe uh, don't have the time or, or energy to uh, uh, figure out what the best uh, waiting list strategy is. They end up being shut out, um, either staying at home or using market based um, daycare. And so as this rolls out, I think it's very clear that there's going to be a lot of shortages. They're, they're not going to be able to provide as many subsidized spaces at the $10 rate um, as they expect or to, or to meet demand. And so it's going to have to be rationed in some way. And how is that going to be rationed? Well, experience tells us that the well-off folks are the ones that tend to get it. Um, so to Alberta's credit, uh, they created a system within the national program that uh, does include a an income test. So there is a, a greater um, uh, belief, I guess you could say, in Alberta that, that the, the cheap daycare is going to go um, to the people that really need it um, in that province. So uh, yeah, it's certainly a wrinkle that uh, as this goes on and, and uh, parents realize that uh, this $10 a day daycare is out there and how can they take advantage of it? I think waiting lists are going to balloon and, and we know what happens uh, when waiting lists get long. You know, I'm, I'm a parent, I have five children, and I, I, you know, you chat with parents at the playground or at the, the waiting pool, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of parents said, oh, yeah, this is at this rate. Yeah, that's a great price. You know, I, I'm a stay-at-home parent, but, you know, I'd love to have this one in a daycare, that one in daycare. I wouldn't have afforded otherwise. 
And, that, and that's all fine and well, but you know, from what you've shared with me, it sounds like many private operators, at least in certain provinces like Nova Scotia and Ontario, are going to shut their doors. Therefore, you're going to lose all those daycare spaces. And then the ones that are available at the $10 daycare rate, as you suggested, might be snapped up by those in a higher bracket. It is shocking to me that the government wouldn't think to include a, lit, uh, a, a, a litmus test for income or a, um, a scale that, okay, if you have this income, a gear to income scale for, for the cost of daycare. This is mind boggling. It's almost as if this was rushed through and nobody thought of these things. Well, and, and kudos to Alberta for, for um, including it. Now, I would say when uh, private daycare operators say that, you know, if they sign on to the federal deal, they'd go bankrupt. I, I didn't think the most likely scenario is that they simply won't sign on to the federal deal um, and they will continue to operate outside the system. So what you're going to see, you know, as you alluded to, is sure, there will be some $10 a day daycare, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough. And you're going to have the for-profit right. operators charging, you know, in big cities like Toronto, it can be $75, $100, depending on the, um, the age range. Um, so you're still going to have those daycares, I suspect, operating. Some may have to shut down because, you know, if there's a $10 a day one beside you, um, that may be a big problem from a market perspective. But but I think a lot of these daycares will soldier on paying mark, charging market rates because there's going to be a lot of parents out there that aren't going to have any choice. Welcome back. I'm joined by Peter Sean Taylor, and we're discussing the National Daycare Program. So, Peter, as we know, this program in several provinces is going to be rolled out this fall. You know, where we stand right now is where Quebec was 25 years ago because they were sort of ahead of the curve, if you will, in terms of implementing a daycare program. Based on their experience, we should look to Quebec. What can we expect, you know, whether we're in Nova Scotia, in Alberta, or in Ontario, what can we expect to see? as this program is rolled out this fall? Well, certainly, uh, Tanya, what we're going to see is enormous waiting lists and a, a big political headache. Uh, as you said, uh, you know, 25 years ago, Quebec made a big splash with its, with its $5 a day daycare. It's now eight something, but uh, uh, that was, you know, a revolution, uh, heavily subsidized daycare for all. Um, the problem was they were never able to deliver enough spaces to meet parental demands. Uh, initially, they tried to take over the for-profit sector in uh, Quebec that comprised about a third of all spaces. They realized that if they were going to meet the demand, they needed the participation of the for-profit sector. They tried to take them over. That didn't work. Uh, they banned new for-profit licenses for five years for ideological reasons. Uh, that didn't work. That certainly didn't help uh, the supply of daycare spaces. Eventually, over a long period of time, a change in government, it was the Charest government, eventually um, said we're going to have to welcome the for-profit entrepreneurial sector back into childcare because there's no way to meet the demand that parents have for heavily subsidized daycare. Um, as a result now, that they brought in a, a child tax uh, credit child care tax credit, uh, they lifted the moratorium on new spaces, they provide subsidies now for the for-profit centers. Um, as a result, two almost two-thirds of all spaces in Quebec's child care system are run on a for-profit basis, which should surprise quite a few well, people because go. Quebec is often held up as this exemplar of, of non-profit delivery. But, you know, what happened, They uh, the, the same uh, that the Bouchard government did in, in 97, the Trudeau government has done now. They say there's ideological reasons for a exclusively not-for-profit system. We're going to control this. It's going to be like a, a you know, a extension of the public sector. And the, the evidence is that you simply can't do it. You need the for-profit. The for-profit brings not only the ability to add new demand, uh, add new supply as the, as the demand spikes, but it also is very um, innovative. If you want. Uh, new services, that's going to be supplied by the for-profit sector, and it's more efficient. Um, you want to build a new daycare, uh, a, a new nonprofit daycare, you need government grants or fundraising. It takes years and years and years. That's why Quebec wasn't able to respond quickly enough. In the for-profit mm -hmm. sector, the entrepreneurs are motivated to open new spaces and open new spaces very quickly uh, when the demand is there. So there's some 
really big lessons to be learned from Quebec, but it took them, you know, a couple of decades to get there. And it would be a real shame for Canada nationally to have to live through all those experiences that Quebec had without learning any of the lessons. Um, it would be a shame. It's going to there's going to be all sorts of wait lists. There's going to be all sorts of political turmoil. Parents are going to find that they can't get the $10 a day daycare they thought they've been promised. So it's a recipe for a lot of unhappiness. Um, and, and but there's a well, solution. Well, sadly, sadly, it seems sadly it seems like we're headed there. Uh, that we're already starting to experience that unhappiness. We only have about a minute left, and I I would sure. be um, it would be terrible if I didn't focus this discussion the last bit on choice. You know, as a parent, you know, you're a parent yourself. There are many parents out there, obviously. We all like to have choice in a system. Children have different developmental needs. Some children require a different environment for their daycare. How will this program, as it's being rolled out province to province, impact choice for parents? About 39 well, seconds. Uh, yeah. Well, um, Alberta parents are going to have lots of choice. Uh, Nova Scotia and Ontario parents are going to have quite a bit less choice. There's going to be uh, various levels of choice in other provinces. But I think uh, when I talk to people across the, the country, Alberta stands out as the model that everyone is most impressed with. They're going to get the, the most uh, increase in supply and the most innovative services because they have chosen to embrace the commercial sector rather than try to bankrupt it or push it off to the side. Okay, we're going to have to stick with this story as it continues to develop. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure, Tanya. Thanks for having me. Well, it sounds like there are already some hiccups and wrinkles in this new federal national daycare plan that's being rolled out province to province. So it makes you wonder, if the program wasn't broke to begin with, why did the federal government have to try to fix it? For CounterPoint, I'm Tanya Granik-Allen.